Hi, George here. And today I wanted to talk to you about using Dodge and Burn for photo retouch and other uses. You find those right over here. Here is the Burn tool right there. And your options over here are Dodge tool and also the Sponge tool. We won't be doing the Sponge tool in this video. We'll be sticking with the Dodge and the Burn tools. Now these are pretty easy to use once you understand exactly how they're working and manipulating the image. But first, we need our download. I got this from Pixabay, my favorite spot for doing image downloads for these videos. Let's take a look at that. I'll bring that site up. And here we go, just a real nice basic portrait with a girl without very much makeup. Now to download this, go over here to the Download button. And I'm using the 1920 by 1920 size right there. So it's a good standard size for Photoshop elements. Then just click Download and download this onto your hard drive someplace where you can easily find that again. And we'll get back to this in just a little bit. Let's just close that out. There we go. First, I'm going to start off with a blank file here. File, go up to New, come down to Blank File. We're using the default Photoshop Elements size, which is 6 by 4 at 300 pixels per inch or PPI. And here we go. Now, to really understand how Dodge and Burn work, you need to see it on just a plain background. So, look over here to the Color Picker. And let's just find a nice blue in here. And just a mid-tone blue right here, something in that range. Just kind of in the middle here. Choose OK. And I'll fill this with that blue. There we go. Just a nice, even kind of an area. And I'll start off with the Burn tool. Now, the Burn tool makes things darker. And the Dodge tool makes things lighter. But it does it in kind of an interesting way. But first, let's see the basics of how these tools work. Simply brush over and it's going to make the area more of what it is that you have here already that's going to be darker. Notice I'm using a soft edge brush. Whenever you're using Burn or Dodge, you want to be using a soft edge brush. And I normally will come in here and do a much lower exposure. Notice how dark that went, just the first pass. So it went pretty dark, pretty easy to see, pretty obvious. You want to bring your exposure down. And I'll come down as much as just to 10%. Get a real soft amount in there. Then you can come in and just do this a couple of times like that and slowly build up the amount that you want. It's very faint and then just build it up. It makes it much easier to use. You want to have that slow build up, so you want to have a low exposure on this. There's also something else about doing this. I'm going to show you this right here. I'll go up to 100% again. And I'm going to click in this pull back and forth like this. There we go, just back and forth. I'm keeping the button down on the mouse and I'll go back and forth. It just kind of gets dark and begins getting a little bit lighter in the middle there. So it's gone really way, way far on using this tool, way farther than you would ever want to use. But notice how it kind of hits a limit and then stops. If I do the exact same thing and then let go and do a new brush stroke each time, notice how much farther it goes into black very quickly. So here's using this technique. Left and right, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six passes, keeping my finger on that mouse button. Here's six passes with a new press each time on the mouse button. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that comes in much, much faster and much more solid, really pushes the effect if you do a new stroke each time. So when you're using this tool, you want to be keeping your finger on the mouse and going back and forth, like you're painting with a paintbrush or something, or kind of just rubbing it in. Maybe think of it like finger painting. You're kind of rubbing it in. So I'll do that. So here's the technique you want. You want to bring your exposure down to just 10%. And then when you use the tool, hold the mouse button down and go back and forth a few times to get the effect that you want. Otherwise, it's going to be going way too dark, way too fast. Now that we have this, though, down here, we can see exactly what happened. Let's first zoom in on this. Here we go. And we'll use this bottom section because this really shows the effect in here. And we'll go back to the color picker. And here we go. Here's our beginning color right there. That's the color that we have just over here someplace. That's our beginning color. If I now click into this middle section up here, it's just a little bit darker right here. Click into that. And you can see how the color moved over to the right-hand side, a big jump. And that's important. On the color picker, if you're using this H up here, the top option, this is the default option. That's hue, saturation, and brightness. Hue is your colors in here. Saturation is left to right, and brightness is top to bottom. So we saw a big jump in the saturation. A little bit on the brightness, went a little bit darker, but a huge jump on the saturation. So the tool is making your colors far more saturated as well, much more color in there. And that's where it's very useful if you're doing 
photo retouch, it's kind of like putting in makeup as long as you're careful with it. If I come down a bit further in here, notice I've only gone just down to here and we're already full saturation, which is the right hand side of this square and a little bit darker. So it very quickly jumps into full saturation. And as I come down, notice our color right here. If I come into this next section and then down into here, to get into the black, it goes down to the bottom on both areas. But right up in here, as I back up a little bit and you watch that section right there, I'm gonna zoom in on this, you can see this better. I'll start up here and just watch this area here. This is the hue. As I come in and just come down, just a little bit, notice that the hue is beginning to shift a little bit. It's not a lot, it's not dramatic, but it is shifting. So we are getting a color shift as well. And it pushes it towards the, it kind of pushes it towards the end of the color spectrum in here, one way or the other. So we're getting a lightness shift and we're really getting a very fast saturation shift. And we're also getting a little bit of a hue shift or a color shift in there. So it's actually doing three things in here, which is why if you've been playing with this tool and it's not quite working for you, it's probably because one of those moves you weren't expecting. Let's take a look at this same thing here. This time though, I'm going to do another layer and we'll do more of a flesh tone. Let's make a new layer here. I'll hide that background layer. Bring our color picker back up again. Let's come down into our yellow orange. Right over in this area in here, these are more of your flesh tone colors right in here. A little more saturation is a little bit more suntan possibly. And there's a, of course a little shift up and down in here, but most of your flesh tones are right in around this range, kind of mid orange area and way over in this area here. Go a little bit lighter on that. There we go, it's kind of a basic flesh tone. Click in here. We'll do the exact same thing here with the burn tool. And our settings are real low. And you wanna do just kind of back and forth like that, just gradually and let it build up some color in there. That's how you wanna use this tool. If you just do your strokes one after another and you're letting go each time, it's going to get dark real fast. Here it begins to go there. And it'll do the same exact thing. If I'm doing new strokes each time, it's gonna take it clear to the end and eventually we'll get to a real dark brown or black. Now it's going slow because of course I have that set at only 10% on that. But we'll see how this is the exact same thing that we're getting before. Here it goes now into the black at the middle. We'll zoom in on that. And back to our color picker. And here's our beginning color up in here somewhere. And as I come in, notice over here that the color is not shifting that much, but the saturation is very quickly moving to the right-hand side of your saturation. And now it's beginning to push that color down as well. So we're getting darker colors and also the color itself is moving down on the hue part of that. So it's the exact same technique in here. It first adds in more saturation and a little bit more darkness, and then begins adding in more darkness and it begins getting a color shift towards the red. All right, let's now see how we can actually use this. Now that we've seen how these things work. Let's see how this compares. I'll just control zero if you're following along. That's a fifth screen. Let's see how this compares to the dodge tool. We're back up to 100% on the exposure. And if I just click and go back and forth like this, holding down the mouse button, it gets to about a certain point and then doesn't go any further. If I click and go several times, several clicks each time, it pushes it all the way to the white. Now notice in here, we're not getting that big color shift this time. So the Dodge tool is not giving us a color shift, but the Burn tool is giving us a color shift because we're not adding in more color here, we're removing. The Dodge tool removes color and takes it back to your basic white. We'll zoom in on this, the zoom tool here. You can see not much of a change here color-wise. It's just kind of slowly moving in towards the white. Okay, back to control zero fit screen. So when you're working with these tools, the way I just like to think of them just basically is that the burn tool makes things darker and more saturated and that the dodge tool makes things lighter and less saturated, more towards white. Let's now see how we can use this information. I'll bring back up that image. There we go. This docker right there. Just a nice basic image here. Let's say you wanted to make this more of a made up look. We can do a few things for that. We can use the burn tool to add a bit of an eyeliner here, a bit of an eye shadow up here and to darken down the lips for lipstick. Easy to do. Just zoom in, go back here to the burn tool, bring your brush size down. 
I'm using the left bracket key. So it's about the right size in there for that area. Looks pretty good. Exposure is down at 10. I'm just gonna come in here. I'm just gonna brush back and forth again, holding down the mouse button the whole time. I'm not letting go of the mouse. And just kind of going back and forth and bringing that a bit darker. Come over here, same thing. Hold that mouse button down. And it's just accentuating the colors that are already in there, making them a bit more towards the red and more saturated. You can do the exact same thing with the lips if you want to. And this will make the lips redder. It's not quite the same thing as putting in lipstick, which is actually adding in a color, but it does basically the same thing in here and makes them just more color on those. Now the teeth would be the opposite. If you want these teeth to be whiter, although these are pretty white, already. If you want those whiter, let's just switch over here to the dodge tool. I'll bring my size down so it fits the teeth. There we go. Bring the exposure down again. You also want to be using a low exposure below 20. And same thing, just kind of brush over like that just a little bit. Almost like you're brushing the teeth. And that will push them more towards the white. And there we go. And she has whiter teeth, redder lips now, and she has some eyeshadow all done very easily with that dodge and burn tools. If you want to make her look a little bit thinner, you'd add in a bit of a shadow in here underneath the cheekbones. And that makes the face look just a little bit thinner in there. Let's now see how we can use this on a layer mask. Let's see if we can use the subject select if it will find just the face. There we go. Looks good. Let's switch over to any of the selection tools and let's hit refine edge. I'll bring my brush size up. About twice, I'll set this for 70. And I'll come right along the edge here because we're working with hair. I always use the refined edge when I'm working with hair. Now the refined edge is going to be making the edge more transparent in here. Let's see if I can pull it into this area here. Sometimes works, sometimes not. I'll have to go back in and fix it if I wanted to actually have that. For this video, it doesn't matter. But normally I would come in and I have to fix that on the layer mask side. All I care about right now is just the edge of this, and we'll see that in just a second. It's just real fast. I'm not spending a lot of time on this for this particular video. It doesn't matter for us. Come down here and let's set our output to new layer with layer mask. Choose OK. Now here's a trick. If you hold the Alt key down and you click on the layer mask, it opens up just that layer mask. So we can see the actual layer mask here. And with layer masks, you can use the dodge and burn tools. Sometimes this works out if there's areas you want to take care of. For instance, over here, there wasn't any real hair over in here, just a little bit. We're getting this large area of just kind of a semi-transparency. You can make these more contrasty with the burn tool. And the reason why that works is that we are pushing this more towards black and away from the white. If this was on a transparency, and I'll show you that in just a moment here, this doesn't work. But it does work on layer masks because we have black to white. You have to have both sides of this, both the black and the white side for this to work. Okay, back to our burn tool here. I'm going to pull it up a bit to about halfway so it goes fast. You can see this more quickly in here. On the layer mask, now if I brush in, you can see how it, it is making that more contrast. Let me pull that down a bit now. It makes that edge more contrasty because it's making that area, pushing it more towards the blacks. So you can sharpen up the edge of a layer mask very easily in here with this burn tool. And it tends to help you make hair stand out, things like that, it just kind of sharpens the edge. Now, normally when I'm doing this in my videos, I'll be over here at this level here, and we see it like that. And I'll say to go to the layer mask side, we don't see the layer mask, but I'm on the layer mask side. And I'm doing the exact same thing in here. I'm just making that layer mask more contrasty with that burn tool, just like we saw it was happening when we were looking at the actual layer mask side of that. So that's how that works. Okay, one more thing I want to show you, just so there's no confusion on this, go up here to File, I'll make a new blank file here. Let's dock this one. There we go. I'm gonna control zero set fit screen, make our colors black and white, and I'll grab the circle tool here. I'm just gonna put just an ellipse Right in the middle here is going to be a black ellipse, black circle like that. And notice when I put a shape on here, it comes in on a new layer with a transparent background. If I hide the white, it's on a transparent background. Let's just simplify that. So There's now just an image on that. And I'm going to soften this edge down with the 
Gaussian blur, so blur, Gaussian blur, and there's a nice soft edge. Now you would think that if I came in here and I used the dodge tool, it would then make this edge more contrasty. But it doesn't work that way because we're not going from black to white. We're going from black to clear, which means that everything in here, this is all black. It just has more of a transparency to it. It's black that you're seeing through. It's not shades of gray. So that's why the burn trick here will not work on this kind of an area where you have a color and transparency. It has to be on one layer that has both dark and light parts on that one layer for this to work. If you want to sharpen up an edge like that. Okay, final thing down here is looking at our controls. We have this range over here. Not really that big of a deal. You have shadows, highlights, and midtones in between. This just means it's going to be preferencing those parts of your picture. I found though that there's not that much of a difference between these differences. You may see it if you have a real stark difference in areas. You may see a bit more of a difference in here, but this really is a very subtle thing, a subtle change on your image. So most of the time I just ignore that range and it works just fine. If you want to, if you know you're working in a real area with real highlights and that's what you want to be focusing on, then go for highlights or midtones of just a standard flesh tones. But most of the time I found, if I just leave that where it is, it works about the same either way. So subtle control over here. If you're doing real detail work, go ahead and try to set this at the area that you're gonna be adjusting. If not, don't worry that much about that one. And if you enjoyed this video, there are a couple of things I would really appreciate. One is of course that you subscribe to my channel. The more subscribers I have, the better the channel runs. And the more this is gonna be shown to other people on YouTube. And two, if you want to help keep this channel going, just click on that thanks button right down there below the bottom right hand corner of the video. Really appreciate that as well. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, not just these few things I've shown here in this video or my other videos, but you want to learn the whole program, the best way to do that is with my complete training course. And I'll put a link for that in the description. Okay, and I'll see you next time.